dealing with longer hair and a receding hairline. I'm scared. Welcome back to the channel. This is Demetria Sparrow aiding you in the journey to freedom and femininity. I do have an Instagram and a Facebook page, so make sure you're following me there. And if you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe. I wanted to make this because this may not be something uh, we kind of uh, talk about. There's probably one of you out there who is going through something similar and you don't really know where to go from here. Have you grown up your hair? Is it starting to recede? And whenever you do it up into some sort of hairstyle, it hurts. We're going to jump into that. So let's start off with some context. So I am a trans woman by definition. I was born male and I transitioned at 19. I am 22. I had good hair to start with as a young guy. It's not hereditary for me to have gotten male pattern baldness. I transitioned at 19 and by the time I was nearly 20, I started doing estrogen. In terms of balding, if that could ever happen to me, it's not hereditary wasn't happening already. Testosterone was leaving my body. I should be safe, right? What's been happening to me in the past nine months? I wear ponytails frequently. I endure a lot of sensitivity and pain when I put on a ponytail. Furthermore, when I take off my ponytail when I come home from work, there is evident pain and almost like nearly throbbing sensation. It's sore. I'm an essential worker in lockdown right now, so I gotta wear a ponytail for work. My work requires that I put on a hairnet and a basically hard hat that is pressing on my scalp the entire time, 40 to 48 hours a week. My hair has gotten the longest my body has ever known it has. So during the past nine months, my hair has been acting a little weird. Stuff like pain, sensitivity, hair thinning, breakage, excessive hair falling out. Whenever I brush my hair now, more hair seems to come out. It seems like every time I have to pull out hair from my brush. So whenever I brush my hair at the sink, brushing it down, down like this, on the sink, there are broken fragments of hair just falling and scattering. My forehead, like I said, has appeared to have receded, which is one of my big insecurities as a girl. Hair, my hairline appears shorter, thinner, and sparser. So what is it I'm dealing with? Why is my hair receding? What is it and how can I treat it? Being the research junkie I am for this channel, I did extensive research and I wanted to figure out what exactly was causing it. And it is a little something called traction alopecia. Traction alopecia is a form of what's called alopecia, which is loss of hair from either the head or from the body. In traction alopecia's case, the loss of hair is caused by a constant pulling of some sort that is forcing the pulled hair to become weaker and eventually break off fall and they basically can't survive, you may not be able to grow the hair there anymore. It's not something that happens overnight. Usually it comes from wearing a certain hairstyle. Ballerinas and gymnasts, you'll find sometimes they have like larger foreheads and it's because of putting their hair up in a bun for extended periods of time, like months or years. Perfect example of someone who basically has it. I don't know if their forehead always looked like that. But if you look at Jojo Siwa, for example, you can kind of tell she does that sort of ponytail all the time. It looks like her hairline's supposed to start like right here, but it looks like it's back here. And it, it looks kind of asymmetrical, like it's right here and then the other part is kind of right here. I don't know if she always had that hairline, but that is a case of traction alopecia. Traction alopecia causes hair to thin out or fall in clumps. Over time, you start to see your hair is thinning in a sort. There is repeated stress on the scalp. Sensitivity, pain, tenderness, soreness on the pulled area, and in a lot of severe cases, bump like pimples and even blisters. Like I said, this most commonly happens with certain hairstyles. So in my case, uh, in Chojo Siwa's case, it's a tight ponytail. Like ponytails, braids, dreadlocks, cornrows, weaves, buns, 
or hair in rollers at night that can inevitably lead to pulling at the hair. For one thing, I talk about long hair in the title of this video because for one thing, this could start happening once your hair grows longer. Long hair is heavier. All of this weight is constantly pulling at your hair follicles, heat damage. So if you are showering in very hot water, if you're using a blow dryer on a high setting, you're using a straightener or curling iron very frequently, this can damage your hair far worse than you can imagine because your hair is already in a fragile, debilitating state. Traction alopecia is also caused by wearing some tight sort of headwear. So at my work, we don't necessarily wear hard hats. We mostly have what's basically a baseball cap with an insert. This is inevitably pressing on my scalp. This is sort of the same situation if you wear certain wigs as well. The front and sides, uh, like your temples, are where traction alopecia most usually happens. The people this typically happens to are actually African-American women due to the types of hairstyles. It could be gymnasts, ballerinas. People with traction alopecia also tend to be a little bit older as well. Your hair becomes less strong. So in ways, it's fully reversible if it's treated quickly. So you need to identify the problem that you are having and that way you can take the precautions necessary. Now if you do not seek to aid yourself, to help yourself very quickly, what you'll find is it can lead to severe symptoms like blisters or sort of pimple-like stuff or kind of like a folliculitis sort of thing. Eventually what ends up happening is the hair dis is destroyed, the follicle is destroyed. You're kind of left with a little bit of scar tissue. So when scar tissue issue happens, that hair is not growing back. At that point, you need, need to basically consult a dermatologist for any treatment that is required for you to restore that hair. Signs of traction alopecia include obviously a receding hairline, typically at the front, pimples at the scalp or on the base of braids, redness, itching, or ulcers on the scalp, your hair parting, the parting starts to widen a slight. There are patches of thin broken hair in the places that it is strained. In very severe cases you can see shiny scarred skin in where your hair is supposed to be. And also blisters and folliculitis. Okay so we've identified what traction alopecia is but how do we solve it? I want to get to the bottom of this very quickly because I love my hair. I don't want to turn into Kevin O'Leary. We're gonna find out what to do with traction alopecia, how to defeat it. There are practical things you can do in your daily hair routine, and also there are certain products that will aid you in helping to strengthen your scalp once again. Don't do your hair up, or at least as minimally as possible, only when you need to. If you do have to wear ponytails, wear them loose, and wear them low. For one thing, don't sleep in ponytails either. You have no idea the way you're tossing and turning at night. If you sit on the scrunchie or uh, the band or the ponytail, that's gonna severely pull at your hairline. What you don't wanna do is tie your hair when it's wet. So say when you're out of the shower. The reason this is severe is because, like I said, with long hair comes a uh, bigger weight on the follicles. Think about what that does when all of this hair is fully saturated in water. It is going to be a lot heavier. For some people, depending on your hair type and the type of hairstyles you're doing, you do not want to, quote, relax the hair. This is a treatment that is applied to curly hair that is meant to straighten it easier in preparing it for a wig or some sort of weave. The thing is, chemical treatments are a bad idea for your hair in general at this point. It seems what would be a really bad idea at this point is to dye your hair, to color it. The worst probably is bleaching it because with bleach you need strong follicles for your hair to handle that. So you can't leave bleach in too long and you actually need to have not showered for two or three days to where there's enough uh, sort of debris and sort of oils on your hair to where there's enough for the bleach to go through to where it's not getting too 
the pure follicle. It has to kind of go through something first. Bleach is very severe. I would not advise doing that. Your hair is fragile enough already. What is advised is to change your hairstyle a little more frequently. The reason you do this is because my hair is always parting at this corner right here. What happens is say when I do my ponytail like this, all of the strain is going into here. And I notice this that it seems the receding I'm getting is on this side as opposed to this side. So what I could do is I could change this part to come over here. You basically want to reduce the amount of strain that is put on a certain area of your scalp. So you want to alternate it to where all the pain is going here and then all there's going to be more side effects going here. So you want to alternate. You want to wear loose fabric ties as opposed to tight elastic bands to tie your hair. When you pull those out inevitably you're going to be pulling out some hair with it and they are inevitably tighter. You're going to want to shower in cooler water and if you are going to blow dry use it on a cool setting and i'd say if you persist in drying your hair on a high setting or using a straightener be sure to use a some sort of heat protecting product prior to using that tool. Also, getting a good amount of protein and iron in your diet is very, very good. Both of these tend to stimulate hair growth. So an interesting thing that you can do is take uh, some sort of oil and massage your scalp, kind of in circular motions like that. Supposedly, if you do that for four minutes a day, it is reported that you'll see results within kind of four to six months. Massaging your scalp stimulates blood flow to your hair follicles. Ensure you have a very diligent hair care routine. You want a shampoo that is going to cleanse and calm and soothe all of your scalp. And what this will help is rejuvenate those hair follicles and give them room, space, and breathability to fully grow back into the hair that you had at one point. Scalp care shampoos specifically, or even antifungal or anti-dandruff shampoos are really gonna help in creating a clean, breathable, area. And the thing is, you also want to be a little more sanitary because sometimes in severe cases, you're almost kind of creating open wounds in that area. Make sure you are being sanitary. Aromatherapy is actually known to stimulate hair growth. Essential oils like cedarwood, thyme, lavender, tulsi, and rosemary are known to aid you. What you want to do is you want to use it sort of with a base product. So say coconut oil, for example, you would take a few drops of the essential oil, mix it in with some coconut oil and kind of massage it sort of like that. You can try what are called scalp sprays. These are made to soothe the scalp. This is known to be used when braids are too tight or braids are too itchy. Hair follicle energizers or stimulators are meant to stimulate hair growth and strengthen the hair shafts. You could also try minoxidil to regrow and strengthen your hair. Very, very reputable and successful in hair growth results. The thing is, I'm not going to recommend, say, go get that product. I have not researched it. I have not looked into it that much. From what I've heard, it's a very extreme measure to go through, and I wouldn't feel comfortable saying just go out and get minoxidil. I would suggest talk to your doctor. You know, if they say try minoxidil, then go for it. I'm going to order some hair care products. Okay, so this is uh, Mazzani Scalp Care Shampoo and Conditioner. Um, this looks really good. This is highly recommended. I'm gonna add these two to my cart. Bosley Professional Strength Healthy Hair Follicle Energizer. Man, $29. But basically, I'm going to buy a couple of these products and I'm gonna take certain measures necessary to basically see some results. So I'm gonna get those, I'm gonna try those products out. I have been meaning to get a good shampoo and conditioner for a while. I feel like Tresemme is kind of lacking. Those are 
recommended products that I'm going to try out and perhaps in six months or so I might get back to you and you may see results you may not I'll tell you how the products go results of improvement um, as I was alluding to could take anywhere from three to nine months to see a change in your hair so basically the amount of time it took to get your hair to this sort of severe point, it takes that amount of time for your hair to get back on its feet. Now, if you do not see any difference, the situation has gotten worse, that is when I would say consult a dermatologist, talk to your doctor, they'll conduct a biopsy to examine the state of your hair and they will suggest the right medical treatment for you. This is something I wanted to address. I don't see a lot of people really talking about it. I don't know if it's as big a deal as I'm thinking it could be. It just seemed when I grew up my hair, when I started putting my hair in different styles, when my body was noticing that my hair was a little heavier, when I started wearing ponytails all the time, when I never really had to, that is when issues started to happen. There it is. I hope you enjoy it. If you do have any questions or concerns or advice, please comment down below. I am not a big YouTuber, so I will surely answer all of your questions. And I will ask you some questions about traction alopecia. Stay beautiful, everyone. Take care.